A lot of work for an inspection, yeah? Set that drum down. Wow, yeah, I'm, I'm into a transmission now, fellas. Never been here before, but I am here now. What I want to see is what's inside of this pump. I just want to make sure this pump's not damaged. And I found some damage. Opening Z hood. Hello there, everybody. Good day to you guys, and welcome back. Glad you guys are here. I am back, fresh off vacation. I am super glad to be here. And uh, I got a boatload of work waiting on me. It's all over the parking lot uh, and outside of the parking lot. This uh, vehicle outside the gate here is a 2016 Chevrolet Tahoe two-wheel drive. Uh, I believe it's got the 5.3. It's an LT direct injection engine. And uh, well, we worked on this thing uh, about three or four weeks ago. It had a, uh, a slight shutter while driving. And I found some uh, engine misfires and a couple maintenance items. And it has returned with a nasty vibration while driving. Stopping the engine. This particular vehicle has approximately 151,929 miles on the odometer. We're gonna go ahead and take it out on the road. We're gonna get it up to speed uh, on the larger size road and we're gonna try to feel for this vibration. Uh, I understand it is very profound. It is central uh, to the vehicle and uh, it's quite violent when the vibe comes in. So we're gonna get this thing back out. We're gonna try to recreate the vibe and then uh, go from there. Uh, I speculate that it has a torque converter issue. Um, I have found a, uh, a TSB service bulletin on this uh, 6L80 transmission. That bulletin states that the thermostatic valve on the side of the bell housing, which regulates uh, transmission fluid flow through the transmission fluid cooler, uh, has some kind of a hang up in it or it's not uh, properly calibrated for the correct temperatures. Either way, there's a replacement valve uh, that has been ordered as per the GM bulletin, and I forget the numbers at this time. I'll put them right up here so you guys can see later. Uh, however, I don't have the valve yet. I actually don't have a torque converter yet at all. I want to verify that uh, the vibe happens to be a torque converter issue. Uh, if it is, we'll go from there, and if it's not, then uh, we'll go from there. So, stay tuned, because this is gonna be a very good video. All right, riding along with a low throttle input. So far, so good. I'm not feeling or hearing anything, but uh, I know through communications with the vehicle owner that that vibration is rather violent and it should not be too difficult to recreate. Traffic's clear. Let's ride. Oh, there was something. We just had a vibe come in very high frequency, it was fast, and, and then it went away. All right, we're fresh off of a red light stop. Let's uh, get going again and see if this vibe is gonna show up. rhythmic too it was coming in and out okay so that's three times I felt it three different vibrations at three different road speeds and three different engine loads there it is Whoa. and that's centralized to the vehicle that's definitely torque converter vibration that's what it feels like to me we were not in the middle of a shift. The transmission wasn't doing anything except holding a steady gear, a moderate load, straight line, and that vibe was in and out, pulsing and pulsing and pulsing. So I, uh, there we go, there's more of it. Okay, I am satisfied. I do believe we have a torque converter vibration. Let's get this thing back to the shop. I'm gonna pull the pan on this. Uh, I have done a fluid exchange service on this trans, but I did not pull the pan. We just hooked it up to the, uh, the BG flush machine. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull the pan. We're going to inspect for uh, any kind of particulate matter in the pan. Uh, maybe there's going to be some torque converter clutch material in there. I don't know. But uh, let's go ahead and get this thing apart on the rack. Disassembled, inspected, and then we will go from there. Green arrow. Let's flip our 180 and get back. It's vibing during a... Uh, acceleration event too all right so the vibe is taking place right now 
I uh, just want to make note that we are not in V4 mode. The DOD system, displacement on demand, is not active. It's in V8 mode, so the uh, the vibration was not initiated by the switch between DOD mode and uh, regular V8 mode. Uh, for those of you that do not know, there's a system in place on this engine where it can actually deactivate half of the cylinders. So on a deceleration event or a very, very light load event, the engine will only run on four cylinders as opposed to all eight. It's a fuel saving measure. Uh, the problem is, is that the system, uh, when it malfunctions, it, it costs 10 times more than the amount of fuel that the system had saved. So uh, it's kind of uh, it's kind of silly that it even exists, in my opinion. I mean, I'm no engineer and uh, I'm no EPA regulator, but I, I do not believe that uh, the cost benefit uh, exists on that particular design, uh, just in my opinion. And I think that's why a lot of people will disable or delete that system entirely. They just don't want the headache. Yeah, it's just one of those ideas that didn't actually work out in the real world. Like communism, it works great on paper, but in practice, it fails miserably. Can I still say things like that? Yeah, I don't know. Cancelled. Immediately cancelled. That's how you know you can't say things like that. Fear of getting cancelled. Yeah, there's that vibe again. Yeah, I saw this meme the other day. It was it said something about uh, when corporations are uh, backing your agenda, you are no longer the resistance. Food for thought. Strike two, canceled twice in one video. All right, pulling back into the shop space. Let's get this bad unit up on the rack and uh, take a look at what, we, uh, what we've got to work with here. Parking's the auto. Pulling in, let's get centered on the rack here. Looking good, that'll do it. Parking's the auto. Windows up, powering down. And of course, we must pop it in Z hood. All right, let's get out of here. All right, let's put the key in there. I'm keeping the windows up so dirt doesn't go in. It's been a little, uh... all right, hood up. Let's see what we got. We need some lumens under here. All right, let's get our light bar set up in here so we can see what we're trying to see. Powering on, surface of the sun mode engaged. And the light bar is dead, oh no. Fail, cut. Round two, take two, no worries. This is why we have backups for our backups. That way if something doesn't work, we got a backup. Powering on, there we go, lumens. Okay, let's just pull this dip and stick real quick, like. Take a look at our fluid. Fluid looks uh, beautiful, brand new, because we just put it in there like a month ago. All right, that guy back for right now, because uh, we're going down below. I think we're gonna pull this trans out today. Okie dokes, we've got the rack set down below. Moving on up, black subscribe button. Let's get her up in the air and take a look at what's inside of this pan. All right guys, we're down below. Here's our trans pan. We've got some exhaust action. I'm gonna let this cool off before we touch the exhaust. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the bolts out of this pan, drop this thing down, and we're gonna inspect it for carnage before we proceed. No reason to, to not find out. There we go, it's flowing now. Let's let this thing drain for a little while and then uh, once that's slowed down some, we'll come on back to it and uh, finish pulling this pan down. Okay, the drain has slowed. Let's pull some more bolts out of this and get this pan dropped all the way. Ooh, hot, it's warm. Hot, hot, hot. Come on, fluid. Finish what you're doing here. Yeah, I grabbed some towels for a little bit of thermal protection so I don't overheat my flanges. Pull this out the rest of the way. Ah, 
off fluid to the face. Transmission fluid does not taste good. Okay. Let's see if I can do this without dousing myself in lubricant. What I need to do is let this pan fall forward some and drain the rest of it out through the front. Let's see if she's going to come out or not. I might have to take that exhaust down. I don't know. I hope I don't. Come on, come out of there. It's not coming out. Pry bar. Right here, dude. What I want you to do, put the uh, pry bar right there, and you're gonna pry down on that exhaust. Wait, don't do it yet. Okay. Let me get a hold of that pan first. Don't do it. I'm not, I'm not. You did it. I saw you. I did not. Careful. <laughs> All right, give it a give it a pry. A better one. Hang on. All right. You got hands? I got hands on the thing, yeah. It's not moving. It's not doing it. Nope. Hmm. All right. Try it from the other side. Go over here to the other side and try it. No, no, you got to move over some. I need space for the hand to come come free. Not coming out. No, it's not gonna work. Okay, I got to pull the exhaust down to get the pan out. All right, no worries. Well, it looks like I was a little ahead of myself here, and I'm gonna have to pull this exhaust out before I I pull anything else apart. I have a. Uh, I've already gone ahead and broken the bolts loose, so fortunately none of them uh, broke off or stripped or anything. Knock on wood. So uh, let me go ahead and back these guys out. I will uh, disconnect the O2 sensors and take those out with the exhaust Y pipe. And uh, once that thing's out, we'll proceed to uh, return to the transmission and get this pan down for inspection. Okay, so I have all six of the exhaust flange bolts disconnected and it has allowed this pan to move ever so slightly. So now I think I'll be able to sneak this pan out behind the exhaust, and then uh, you can see what's going on inside of there. Let's see if this guy's gonna come out. Yeah, there we go, super easy, look at that. Comes right out. Let's finish draining the rest of this fluid out of here. Okay. I found some stuff in the pan. Let's take a look. Let's go ahead and back out of here and see what we've got. Yeah, I see some glitter action going on in there. And take a look here at the magnet. There is some metal on that magnet right there. Not a lot of clutch material in here. This is, uh, this is metallic. I believe this is torque converter clutch material. Uh, that's different than the clutch plate material, but there is some sparkle action. There is metal in this transmission. Let's go ahead and pull the torque converter out of it. I think uh, I'm going to put a torque converter in this and see how she acts. All right, guys, we moved out back to the drive shaft. I'm pulling the U-joint uh, caps off of the rear axle, rear differential. And once this guy's loose, we can slide this drive shaft out. Yeah, looking forward, we'll slide this shaft out and we can take the transmission cross member down. Once that thing's out of the way, we can start detaching and disconnecting the trans and uh, we'll get the jack under it and uh, lower that unit down. I have ordered a heavy duty upgraded torque converter assembly for this unit, but uh, it's not here yet. So I'm hoping it gets here, that way I can get this thing done today but we, we shall see. Come on now, come out of there. Finish. You okay, dude? No. Troy's making Troy noises over there. Uh-oh, that one's captured. No worries, we'll just encourage it with some more pry bar here. Pop that guy out. 
That's what we need. Uh, bolt gravity. Hang on here. Uh oh, should have done that. Never leave drive shafts just dangling all willy nilly like. They'll fall down and hit you in the head. All right, drive shaft. We slide it forward, pull her down, slide it out, and taking care to not bang this on anything. It's aluminum and it's hollow inside and it's very thin. And if we bang it or dent it, it will compromise the integrity of said drive shaft. And uh, that will be bad because that'll ruin the drive shaft. All right, guys, moving back forward. We've got the pole jack still in position. It's holding up the tail shaft of the trans. I'm next, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and remove uh, the cross member right here. The transmission mount has been unbolted through that hole. We've got two bolts here, two bolts here. We're gonna pull those out and then pry bar this bracket down or the cross member down. Once that thing's out of the way, we can sneak the exhaust out of here. And then uh, that'll give us access to the wiring harness, the lines, all the connections, the sensors, etc., the shift cable. We'll pull that stuff off. Then we'll pull the starter out and then we can go ahead and get this unit unbolted, removed from the engine and dropped down for further inspection only. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and get this done. Loud noises. Got a 21 and a 21. Loud. And some slippage. There we go. Put that in right there. Loud noises again. Two on this side. You'll notice I left one of those in. That way the cross member cannot fall out. You guys see that? Yeah, you saw that. French gravity. No worries. I got it. Yeah, that's three. Let's get this last one. Get a hold of it. Can't see. Stop it. There we go. This gun is so powerful. Member. There we go. Set that aside. Now I can uh, maneuver out this exhaust Y pipe. I've already got the O2 sensors disconnected. We just need to back this thing off of the flange bolts and then uh, drop it down. Come on out, you. I'll pry bar you. You know I will. Okay. Oh, I've also put the trans pan back on. I did that when you guys weren't looking. Hope you don't mind. I needed to uh, prevent the drippages from dripping on me. Ooh, I'm just trying to get this disconnected from the rear clamp. Come on now. Let's try this now. Okay, it's loose, it's free. Can I maneuver it out? And hey, you're coming out of there. Ow. I hit my flanges. Hmm. Ow. What's in the way here? The exhaust flange up there kind of in the way. <laughs> Should be ready to come out, but being stubborn. Here 
comes. Ah. Oh, it's getting heavy. We gotta go back, down, and then out. Oh, heavy. Ah. Woo. Got it. Exhaust removed. Now we've got some more space here to play with. Let's see what we've got. There's a heat shield that's got to go so we can take the connector off of the wiring harness. Then over here, there's the two cooler lines. Those have been disconnected and I've got to pull the starter out next. Okay, let's go ahead and lose uh, the camera. Let's go ahead and lose this heat shield thing right here. Get this guy unbolted, disconnected, and then uh, we can get that wiring harness disconnected. There we go. Now the harness, it's got this little safety clip. We gotta pop this thing out, which I can't get by hand. Gonna need a pocket driver. There's one. Let's see this guy. Let's get behind this and pop it out. There we go. Come on out. Voila. Okay, so I'm gonna let this trans down some. I need to get to that bolt that uh, secures that wiring harness. So we're just gonna back the screw down, keeping an eye on the mount point, make sure it's not gonna slip off and fall out and break and all that good stuff. Just let this down ever so slightly. I mean, it's not gonna fall, it's still bolted to the engine, but I don't want to uh, put all the weight and leverage it against the oil pan. That would not be okay. Okay, let's get Let's get this little guy out of here. This connector. That's the bracket for the harness, so that thing's free. And then over here on the driver's side, there's one more bracket up here. And that holds onto the fuel line, the other side of that harness. And uh, I think that's it. Oh, we got, uh, we have the shift cable here. Let's unplug that. Set this thing aside, there we go. Flashlight. Hit you guys in the head with a flashlight. Sorry. You okay? Okie dokes. Moving forward a little bit. Let's go ahead and attack this starter motor. Hmm. Need more torquage. That impact wasn't doing it. Do this by, uh, by hand manually. Unclick. There we go. And second starter bolt. There we go. Right there. Beautiful. Now I can finish it. You gonna come out? That was rough. Yeah, there's one bolt. Oh, there's a bracket or something up there. Hang on here. There's a little, uh, there's a metal heat shield bracket holding this up that thing right there I need to take that off see how it's uh capturing the starter need to move that too all right let's just get up here with this electron ratchet and buzz that thing out there we go and it's uh still not enough why are we hung up what is problem i don't know Plastic shield, maybe? Why are we, uh, why are we stuck? Yeah, there's a little plastic shield here. Get that out of the way some. Let's see what the dealio is. And that starter bolt's kind of stuck in there, too. Oh, that does not want to come out. Well, why are we, what are we hung up on here? It's just a starter. I don't get it. I should not be doing that. What am I missing? Oh, you know what? I know what it is. The cable is not very flexible and the cable doesn't want to bend. I think if I just push a little harder and go straight back, it'll, uh, it'll come free. That's the issue here. That 
that starter cable is just uh, just really stiff. There we go. Okay, that's now free. If we look over, we can see the uh, back of the flex plate. Uh, I need to rotate this engine around and we're gonna find three bolts. I think they're 15 mil. We'll find three bolts for this flex plate. We take those loose. The torque converter will be loose from the flex plate and then we can unbolt the bell housing and remove it from the back of the block. All right, looking past the starter, let's go ahead and rotate this thing around till we find some bolts and we've got one right here. There's one 15 mil bolt. Okay, let's see if I can get to this thing. I'm gonna skip past that one because I think I can reach it, try to reach it with an impact. I think I can only reach it at the bottom. So we'll come back around to that one later. Where's my next one? There it is. Let's see if I can't get a tool on this unit. Uh, no, no, I can't fit in here with this tool. Okay, it's not gonna work. Maybe with a wobble, I'll try it with a wobble, Let's see if I can get on there. Let's see, yep. On pickage. Oh no, it fell inside. Come here. Oh no, it fell inside more. That's not what I wanted to do. Okay, I'll get that out later. No worries. I know it's in there. Here, rattling around. Here's the next one. Let's go ahead and pull this guy out. Same method without dropping it. Didn't drop that one. Good. It's two down, one to go. Come out. There it is. Torque converter bolt number three, remove, three out of three. Now, let's come out of this little hole here and we can start to work on the bell housing bolts. Two up there, two at the top, two down here. Likewise on the other side, once those are out, we can pull this unit out, drop it down, remove it, and then pull that converter out of it. Here, let's go ahead and start with the nut that secures the uh, transmission dipstick tube. Pull that guy out, and then we can try to slide that tube up and out of its home. That's gonna expose the other side of that, uh, that nut right there. And we'll go in with a wobble and another socket, deep well. Start pulling these guys out, gravity. Twice, oh no, dropping everything. Got him. All right, we're coming in with the floor jack. It's time to, uh, Get the remaining bolts removed. So I've got the jack coming up. Pump this thing up. It's a foot operated pedestal jack. We'll get this thing in position, throw some ratchet straps over the top of this unit to secure it. And then we can get it unbolted and backed away from the engine block. This is why I had to put the, uh, the pan back in. There we go. It's good right there. All right, we're going in to the very, very top of the unit. There's a 13 millimeter nut and a bracket and then one pass-through bolt at the top of this bell housing. These are really hard to get to. I gotta line it up and get the socket in position. There we go, it's over the stud. Okay, I need to back this nut off and then once this is off, I can clear those brackets. Unkickage. And it came off. That's great. Slippages. Do it again. Because I love my job. Actually, it's loose. I'm just going to reach up there and see if I can't just get it out by hand. Sometimes, yeah, that's just easier sometimes. Just, just reach in. No power tools needed. And now it stopped turning. Okay, going back in. Power tools needed. 
Well, at least a socket anyway. Come here. See you. Okay, there it is. I've got the socket on the nut. Turn this guy a little bit and get it backed off. It was almost out by hand. I tripped at the finish line. There she is. There's the nut. Now I need to repeat with a 15 millimeter. After I get those little brackets out of the way, we reach up here, pull that thing aside. These are uh, kind of a bear because you can get them sandwiched in between the bell housing and the engine block during reassembly and cause a massive misalignment, which is also not okay. Yeah, there we go, got it. That's on the stud. Now you can't see what I'm doing behind us, but I've got the ratchet on the end of this extension. We're gonna break this guy loose. Unclick. There. Go ahead and back it off. Okay. So that's my top stud. I've got the, uh, the four studs on the side. Now all that's left are the two on the bottom. And this unit will be free. Yep, there's that one there. And uh, it's counterpart on the other side over there. I should probably get that ratchet strap that I was talking about in place before we go any further. Safety and whatnot. All right, last two bolts coming out. Those are both on the bottom, one here on the passenger side and one other over on the driver's side. Seriously? Hmm. Extension eating up all of my torquage. Try again. Get in there. Please? Seriously? Okay. Well, it can't defeat my super long ratchet, I can tell you that. I'll just do it manually. Oh, no. really? That was easy. Come on. Let's go ahead and zip that bolt out. more to go over here on the other side you guys can't see it you can hear me unclick okay now this unit has been completely disconnected from the engine block let's get in here with some pry bar kind of wiggle it out some and back it away from the engine and uh we'll go ahead and let her down all right we're looking back up at the bell housing where the starter lives. I'm gonna get in there with a pry bar and just start to kind of work this thing a little bit. See if we can't pop it loose. Mm, it's in there. Come on, transmission. Work with me here. Come out. It's moving. The, uh, the dowel pins, they're steel pins that run through into the block. Those are hanging us up a little bit. We hear the thing moving around. I see it moving around. I'll just keep wiggling it. They'll work themselves free at some point. Maybe I'll put some spray in there. Yeah, a little bit of penetrating lubricant couldn't hurt. See if I can't get it in the crack, in the hole. Try that. Just keep on working it, it'll come out. Slowly. Shaky, shaky. Yeah, it's moving. I think the other side's moving a little bit better than this side. Yep, sure is. Yeah, let's go check out this other side over here. Moving on around. Yeah, watch, uh, watch right up here at that, uh, that pin. 
I'm gonna get behind it and kind of pry it out some. It should start to come free. Yep, see that? There's a gap right there, a gap formed. It's coming out. Good, back to the other side. All right, back on the uh, passenger side. Let's give this another pry. Let's see if it's gonna come out. The other side moved. This side's being a little stubborn here. No worries. Yeah, it's coming. Come out, pin. I grow weary of your your tomfoolery here. The little games we play. Need a transmission puller. Just pull it off. It's moving. It's just not wanting to slide off like it should be. I, uh, I'm gonna go in there with a smaller pry bar. It's actually my trim tool. What I'll do is I'll pry the trans away and create a gap right up here. And I'll see if I can't get that trim tool in that gap just to keep the spacing. Maybe a screwdriver. Trim tool is not gonna fit. I'll try a small screwdriver. So real quick, in an abundance of caution, I'm gonna put one of these bolts back in just in case this thing pops out uh, with some momentum. I would prefer that it not fall out. So just in case, I'm gonna put one of those bolts in. It's not in all the way, it's just enough to hold it in case this thing wants to get away from me. And I'm just gonna keep on wiggling. Yeah, right, let's uh, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of tap this screwdriver up some and it's gonna drive that wedge between the trans case and the engine. I saw it move, it's coming out. Yeah, there we go. Now we've, we've broken the seal, so to speak. Good. Switch this out for a bigger bar and this thing should come out. Get some additional leverages. Oh, it looks like the dowel came out with uh, the trans and it did not stay in the engine like it should have. No worries. Let's pull this bolt back out. Freedom it has almost achieved. The driver's side still a little hung up. A little bit more wiggling. There we go. She's free. Woo! It's always the scary moment as soon as it all comes uh, comes out. Okay, let's back out of here a little bit. We'll roll this unit back some and uh, get it lowered down. Come on back, transmission. A little bit of down. farther back. Yeah, both of those pins uh, came out in the bell housing and not, you know, they did not stay in the engine block, so I've got to transfer those back over. No huge deal. Come on down, unit. Lines are clear. Hoses are disconnected. Fuel lines disconnected. Okay, looking good. Transmission coming down. And there's our unit in question. That's our torque converter right there. All right, guys, here she is. Here's the uh, the failure point in my estimation. It's still hot, too. Woo! Let me get some gloves. Let's, uh, let's pull this thing out of here, get it set down. Yeah, I figured this thing would have uh, cooled off by now, but I guess not. Let's go pop this guy out. 
trying to come straight back, being mindful of the seal. I don't want to damage that. And we're spilling. There we go. Set this guy down. Oh yeah. Made a mess. All right, so here's the deal. Um, I found metal inside of this pan. Uh, I'm inclined to disassemble this just a little bit further. Uh, keep in mind, I'm not a transmission guy and I don't get into these things. Uh, however, it's just nuts and bolts and I, I have no fear. So I'm gonna pull this bell housing out and I'm gonna see if I cannot pull at least the pump out of this trans just to inspect it. I wanna make sure that that metal that I found uh, was not pump pieces. If it was pump pieces, then putting a converter in this will not solve the issue. And if it's not pump pieces, then putting a converter in it uh, should solve the issue. Uh, however, I just don't want to take that kind of a risk, so I am going to go ahead and pop this uh, bell housing off. If it'll come off with some relative ease here. Never done this before. But I guess there's a first time for everything, right? Why not? Let me get a little hammer here to tap this thing loose. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm not a transmission guy. Never have been. Never aspired to be. However, I think it uh, may be necessary to uh, to learn and get out of that fear of the unknown. Now, come off of here, bell housing. Is there, it's got alignment pins in it. Something's holding it up, up here somewhere. I think it's that hose. Okay, let's try to wiggle that thing off of there. It's the, uh, it's a vent hose. Let's get you to come off. There we go. Now will it come free? Hmm. No. What's the hold up? Am I missing a bolt? No. Delio. All right, here, let's, uh, let's try pry bar action. A little bit here. Yeah, it's coming out now. A little bit here. Come on out. Oh, I'm doing stuff that I don't normally do. Here we go. I'm getting into the danger zone. I'm scared. Here she comes. What are we doing here? Something's hanging it up. I don't know if I can take this apart. Hmm. Okay, well that does not want to come out. So uh, I've now uh, reached a snag. We're going over to the bench. I'm gonna put this unit on the bench. We're gonna pull the pan back off. Uh, I'm gonna unbolt the valve body because I think the valve body keeps that from coming out. Uh, I don't know, but I'm gonna find out. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and disassemble this unit and. Uh, and just while well, we're gonna inspect it, make sure nothing else is damaged. Let's get this thing rolled over and on the bench. Unloading and transferring to the bench. There we go. Get right there. And I'll go ahead and roll it over. And we'll pull that valve body back out. Let me try to give this one more tug just to make sure. I was a little skeptical. Nope, that's not gonna come out. Something's hanging it up. Yeah, I was a little nervous about trying to pull this apart. Uh, over there on the jack because that jack is not incredibly stable and it was it was scary there we go now you may ask why am i going through all this because of a torque converter vibration and i just don't want to do this job again and i'd rather know for sure rather than uh run the risk of putting this thing back together and then having to take it apart again. So here's our valve body. We've got a series of bolts here that hold these things in. I don't know which ones uh, are actually the bolts that hold it down, but I'm gonna learn and find out. So here we go. Okay, here we go. Stop pulling bolts out. Mm-hmm. 
sure hope I know what I'm doing. If I don't, that could be bad. Actually, I confess, I, I really don't know what I'm doing because I've never done this before, but I mean, it's just nuts and bolts and it has to happen, so that's what's gonna happen. That's a long one, okay. Long one. At some point, this thing should start to start to move. I hope. Okay, it appears that I have all the bolts loose. Uh, I'm not pulling them out because I don't want to lose where they go. But I've got them all backed away. Let's see if this foul body is going to move. And yes, it's starting to come free. Okay, she does move. What's hanging us up here? Something. Something's still hanging it up. I don't want to break anything because I don't have any extra parts right now. Let's see how this guy comes out. Uh, slides back like so. Okay. Let's make sure I've got all these bolts out of the holes real quick. Yes, yes, yes. That one's a negative. There we go. Come out. Okay, it looks like the wiring harness connector is hanging me up. And that's about it. Let's see how this guy comes out. I think I have to take it apart from here. Yeah. There it goes. There we go, I got it. Foul body removed, all right. Well, now I'm kind of getting excited. I've uh, never done this before. Let's go ahead and uh, see if I can't get this pump and bell housing off now. I was uh, ahead of myself. That wasn't supposed to come out without pulling the valve body off. And I did make an error there, but fortunately I didn't force it and break something which is good because I'm not in the mood to break a transmission today. Whoa, what are we doing now? Okay. Pull this guy out. Set her down. Okay, I uh, found another area where I made an, a mistake. You see this, uh, those drums were not supposed to come out with this pump and bell housing. And they came out because I failed to remove this little O-ring right here around the splines. And because I didn't pull that O-ring out, I think this, uh, this shaft did not slide through, which is the reason that those drums came out with, uh, with the bell housing. So I pulled that O-ring, straighten this guy back up. And then I can go ahead and pull these guys off the way they were supposed to come out. Yeah, that's how that was supposed to go. Set that down. So I'm, I'm learning. We've got a planetary gear set here. We need to keep all this stuff exactly where it goes. Because I don't know by memory how it goes back and, and I don't want to get in more trouble than I've already gotten myself into on this car. That'd be bad. A lot of work for an inspection, yeah? Set that drum down. Wow, yeah, I'm I'm into a transmission now, fellas. Never been here before, but I am here now. What I want to see is what's inside of this pump. I just want to make sure this pump's not damaged. Let's see, we've got some eight mils here. Let's pull these guys out and get this thing to come apart. And maybe I can get a hold of this, uh, the pump internals and see what's going on. Stuff aside, does this thing come out? 
I think I know what the deal is. It's just press fit very well. So let's give it a turn maybe. There we go. Came right out. Look at that. Okay. We got another seal in here. There's a seal. No debris located. Okay. Let's set that guy aside. And here's our uh, our pump assembly. Well, we've uh, come this far. Might as well keep going. That's what I wanted to do. And I don't think I've disassembled this to a point of no return just yet. Perhaps with the exception of uh, those little O-rings. I'm sure those are readily available. This one's actually kind of hardened. I don't like that. So putting O-rings in it may not be a bad idea. Let's just make sure all these are the same length. Pull these out. I'm measuring them as they come out with my icrometer. They all appear to be identical. Okay. There's our pump housing. Yeah, there's a there's some markings on there. A little bit of wear. Nothing crazy. Okay. Okay, so the inside of this pump seems to be in good condition. A uh, little bit of debris. I don't see any metal or anything like that floating around in here. No major damage. So I think this section is good. Get this dried up some, cleaned up. There's some dirt that showed up as I took this apart. Kind of fell into that crack there. Let's wipe that out. We don't want any dirt in there. Actually, I'll pull this O-ring off. Oop, stay. Wipe it down with that O-ring gone and then put the ring back. We do not want sand inside of our transmissions. Not good. Okay. Wipe that guy down a little bit. We'll put you back on. This may have gone a little bit easier had I known the proper order of operations. But I didn't, so I don't, so I didn't. That's a bumper sticker. There we go. All right, so one last point of inspection here before I attempt to assemble all this. I'm gonna pull a couple of these clutches out and just see how they're looking. I can't really go super far because at some point I'm gonna need some extra large transmission uh, snap ring pliers to get this apart, but I think for the time being, I can get along just fine with that pocket screwdriver. Let's see how these clutches are looking. This isn't horribly complicated. Maybe I've been scared of these for no reason. The steels look good. Come out, steel. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna go too much farther. These all look okay. Nothing burnt on this clutch back, so. Pull it out, see what's at the bottom of it. While I'm in my my lurk. Oh no, I looked over and my GoPro was off, so I don't know how much you guys saw and how much you didn't see. Let's see how this works out. Yeah, I'm gonna have to assemble this trans and then put these uh these drums back in because they should not have come out in the order that it did. So I, I actually kind of disassembled and inspected my way into a something of a rebuild here. I'm gonna have to learn how to do this. I have no choice. Well, not really a rebuild, but I need to learn how to put this together. That's for certain. I'll be okay. I think I can handle it. in there like so. It looks like 
this side is going to face that drum and it splines into there, which means this planet goes in that direction. We'll set this guy down in. Go into your ring gear, please. Get all the way in. I took my gloves off. I now realize why transmission guys don't wear gloves. Just can't have that. inside of our planetary gear. There we go. And then I believe what I need to do is get this drum back over those drums. And I'll have to do that by putting the clutches in one at a time. But no, that's not going to work either because these guys are held in with snap rings. So how am I supposed to get Maybe it's gonna go like this, I know. Let's try something else. I'm gonna figure this out. One way or the other. How's that four look? It's okay, I think. Maybe like so, and then you just kind of spin it until they line up. Is that how it goes? The transmission guys now. Or do I have to assemble the clutches? Let's figure this out here. Okay, uh, I think I've got this back together as much as it's going to go together. I believe I have all the clutches lined up with their steels. The, uh, the litmus test here is going to be, does the bell housing fit and fit flush with the case? Uh, if it's not, or if it doesn't, then I know I don't have all those clutches in place. And uh, that would be not okay. But I believe I got it. Let's wiggle that guy in. Oh, good. Yep, sure do. We're good to go. Get lined up flush. Everything's back together. The internals look good from what I took apart. At least this drum did. I didn't go all the way in because I don't know what I'm doing, but uh, that was about as far as I'm comfortable with going right now. Um, it's not as scary in there as I thought it was, but uh, this is also not something to be toyed with uh, in my estimation. So eh, that being said, I think I'm going to go ahead and put this back together. We're going to toss that new torque converter in it, get it back in the truck take it back out on the row ad. We can then do a shift relearn and uh, see if this thing vibrates again. However, uh, since this is a huge job and it's getting late in the day and I'm sweating and I'm running out of GoPro battery, I'm gonna go ahead and use this opportunity right now to go ahead and close this video out. Uh, I will do that as always by thanking each and every one of you guys for watching this video. I certainly hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please feel free to let me know about that by tapping that like button down below. Drop me a comment or two while you're down there, and uh, and I will not forget to replace the sewer ring. And most importantly, after those comments, do not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. End of Tejo, end of transmission. End of 6L80 torque converter replacement, part one.